<laughs> Greetings boys and gits and welcome again to Dread War Gaming. In this episode I'm going to be taking a look at Orc Kill Tanks. But first I've decided to try an entirely new format for my videos. Every weekly episode will include some regular segments as well as the main body of content of course. So without further ado allow me to introduce to you the first of these regular segments the news. Welcome to the news. Hardcore miniatures have released artist sketches of a very seriously wanted new orc miniature. This is the Ghost Orc or Ghost Rider Orc. Currently, Ghost Orc's identity has been unconfirmed, but these artist sketches give us at least an, an idea of what he might be looking like. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. I'm sure there'll be more soon. In addition to this, Hardcore Miniatures Lobo style orc as you see here, has arrived at our desk. So we're going to be taking a look at that in this episode. Facebook's social media group, Boss Mechs Boys, is running a contest currently to convert an Achilles Ridge Runner. Now any mech crazy enough to take this contest on should go along to the Boss Mechs Boys group on Facebook there and have a little look, because there is a prize also of $25 worth of Games Workshop vouchers. Okay guys, so here is the Hardcore Mini. It comes with a 40 mil base. And first thing to have a look at is the legs and the body. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there is literally no clean up to do on that. You just got to trim the pegs off the feet, which you could actually even drill uh, sizes into, the, into your base and slot him in, but yeah. Um, there is look look at the teeth on the jacket look just by my nail there see they came out perfect no flash on them or anything i'm very very impressed with this um i'll show you in a, just a minute what the size is like compared to other orc minis oh, look at this gruesome weapon here look oh beautiful beautiful so yeah the parts are really really nicely made they're in great condition there's so little cleanup to be done on them i'm really happy i think this head here i won't use this on the model so i'll probably use this one on uh on a storm boy or a pilot or something like that you know yeah they're oh, fantastic i'm really really happy with this so let me just show you what it looks like against another model okay so here's our chap and here is a standard games workshop knob and another one so he is bigger than a knob. Let's have a look against a boss. Yeah, he's boss size. But it all depends on your perspective of things, really, doesn't it? Because for me, I find that, I mean, war boss sizes, they vary, don't they? So he's a standard war boss size. That's what I call him, a standard war boss size. But then you get much larger war bosses, of course, don't you? So. I tend to use these sort of war bosses myself as, you know, in big games, yeah, if you are having several war bosses, great. Otherwise, they are like my war bosses, bully boy knobs, like his personal retinue of knobs, some really hard looking ones. But yeah, that gives you a size idea anyway, guys. And now for something I intend to be a semi-regular segment in episodes, as well as maybe have as a feature episode uh, now and again. And that is breaking the law. So guys, what exactly is a kill tank? According to Imperial Armour Volume 8, Raid on Castral Novum, published in 2010, the kill tanks are a relatively new and terrifying addition to the Orcish arsenal. Their use has spread to various Orc empires and warbands across the galaxy. Kill tanks are an Orky heavy tank design based around the twin Orc loves of extreme speed and violence. The Hulkin slab-sized machines are extremely durable and many have heavily armoured shovel-bladed prowls suitable for ramming their way through obstacles, any obstacles in their path. While much of their mass is made up of engines and drive mechanics which, while temperamental, can propel the tank far faster than an equivalent Imperial machine of its size. The same writer adds that the first kill tanks were believed to have been produced by the infamous murder mechs of Tigris in the late millennium 40. None of that sounds like the admission of an Imperial Observer to me. This information isn't presented as a quote, 
So therefore, it's safe to presume that it's a developer's note, and therefore, is canon law. It's something that GW have agreed to be so. So even if they have left themselves a little bit of wriggle room with terminology like believed, but yeah. What's interesting, though, is that they say these are a new type of orc vehicle and that they are faster than the Imperial equivalents. I like that. <laughs> and that they're so, but that they're so speedy is, you know, interesting because they're, they're, they're such hulking chunks. It's very impressive. And when I first laid eyes upon them, I couldn't decide whether they were fast or slow looking. And I'm glad that they are, in fact, growling beasts with some legs, so to speak, rather than just a, a crawling scrap heap. But they are described as new, which is odd. Perhaps the particular variants described in the book were, but I very much doubt kill tanks and other tanks of similar design and shapes have simply never been created and used by the orcs over their many countless battles for as long as orcs have been orcs. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It just seems highly improbable that they wouldn't have already come up with them. The concept seems a purely logical, evolutionary conclusion for a race who already mastered the creation of equally as speedy, ear-burstingly loud and daca loaded war machines in various shapes and sizes. It just makes sense. And not that it ever sat well with me, but GW's own law on orcs, where they, it kind of contradicts this, because they, they suggest that orc mechs inherit the, the competency required to actually get the right bits in the right places and get all the worky bits working from some kind of genetic memory um, and that only a few orcs uh, are blessed with this gene and because they carry it they are then able to just know how to make this stuff so GW's own fluff sort of knocks the idea that this is just a new invention of the orcs out I mean it just doesn't make sense to me I would say kill tanks have always existed and that They've only just been acknowledged. They've only just had some attention. It doesn't mean that they've only just been invented. I, I don't like when they do that with a storyline myself. Okay, so let's have a look at the Kill Tanks data slate, shall we? So we see it's a Lord of War and it's costing us 15 power level. It's basically 215 points base without any of the weaponry and stuff like that. So uh, like the the burst cannons like 36 points um, and then there's other bits and bobs that you want to add on there as well so you're going to be looking at uh, 300 points around about maybe a little more um, so the kill tank has a movement starting at 12 inches uh, but when it drops between uh, below 14 wounds so when it's between 6 and 13 that drops to 10 inches and between 1 and 5 to 8 inches a, the weapon skill is also uh, uh, variable, um, the top tier being 3+, plus, down to 4+, plus, down to 5+, plus, and the ballistic skill as well, starting at 4+, plus, down to 5+, plus, then to 6+. Plus. The strength is 8, which is you know fairly decent, toughness 8 as well, wounds 24. It's going to be hard to move this little bugger off the table, especially if you've got a mech in there keeping him... Uh, a custom uh, force field mech and uh, some grot riggers and stuff like that just keeping this thing alive which is really what you want to be doing especially if it's uh, it's going to act as a bullet magnet isn't it it's going to sit there and attract either a lot of attention or be ignored either way you're going to win um, or you're, gonna, <laughs> you're not going to guarantee to win but it's going to help you uh, it's a decent model to have on the table because you can really dish out some hurt um, and realistically it's not costing that many, that many points you know it's fairly cheap compared to other relative big models uh, with decent amount of wound so it's definitely something to consider um, I think anyway um, the blah, 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 blah. it's got eight attacks as well it's a leadership seven and a four plus save a kill tank is a single model equipped with a burster cannon and a twin big shooter a kill tank may take two of the following big shooter scorcher rocket launcher, twin big shooter, or rack of rockets. A kill tank may replace its burster cannon with a giga shooter. So you might be asking yourself, where can I get a kill tank? If you're fortunate enough to find them in stock, then you can get them from Forgeworld. 
the Forge World sell uh, the two variants uh, in the same package together. So you've got the uh, Kill Blaster and the Kill Burster. And they both uh, come as a kit, like I say, for 145 euros. It's rather expensive. It is a beautiful kit. It is very highly detailed in some respects, like a, a, the back side or the middle back side there with all the wires and cables. That's a nice detail there. It is a good kit, but like a lot of Forge World kits, it is a sod to put together. Um, I don't personally own one. I've, I've I thought about getting one before. I did read a few reviews and stuff like this in the past, um, and I did look at the kit myself. Um, I did actually see it at um, Forge World stall and all the rest. Um, I just didn't go with it. I went with a few other kits instead at the time, um, and now I actually own a third-party kill tank instead. So I don't, you know, I don't really feel the need to get the Forge World one particularly. Well, it would be nice at some stage. It's just a bit too expensive, if you ask me. Um, so I have a really nice alternative from the green one and the green one's kill tank is called the Doom Tank. There is of course some issue with using third party stand-in models uh, if you was trying to enter into a competition, um, a gaming competition or something like that. Sometimes there are strict rules on using GW only models, particularly those competitions where GW, funny enough, has a strong hand to play in um, organising or sponsoring or whatever it be. Um, but if you go to a smaller club you shouldn't have any problem at all, in fact most people should enjoy seeing your collection of unusual orc models. So I, I personally, I, I'm all about the third party stuff, I don't mind mixing it with my orc stuff. I'm not worried about competitive play particularly, you know, I don't mind being competitive but I'm not going to allow it to get in the way of my modelling. So. Uh, I don't care for being told what I can and can't do either, especially not as an orc, it's just an unorkish thing to do. The Doom Tank comes in two variants. You have the Smasher or the Storm variant. Now both models, um, can, you can decide which model you're going to get. You don't get both weapons, but uh, each weapon only costs 7 euros. So if you buy the kit for 52 euro, you get either, either or weapon, you, you decide. Um, and then you can add the extra weapon on there for seven euros. So for a total of 59 euro, you got yourself a complete kill tank. Um, so I think that's really good value and it's a really nicely detailed tank too, as you can see. And of course, if you do choose the Doom tank with the both of the weapon options over the Forge World kill tank, you're gonna give yourself a saving of about 86 euros. Well, whatever currency you're in, it's, 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 it's fair saving. It's more than the price to buy two of the Tomb Tanks even and still have a relative saving there which you can spend on actually buying some extra third party bits and bobs from maybe um, Green Stuff World, uh, buy some of their little bits and bobs so you can add some little details on if you want to. But if you're lucky enough, you might not even have to buy this model because I'm doing a giveaway, giving away this, the green one, Doom Tank. That's right, I'm giving this tank away because I've reached 300 subscribers in such a very short space of time. The channel's growing with a great momentum and I'm loving it. So all I want to know from you guys in order for you to win this tank is whether you would like the Storm or the Smasher variant of the Doom tank. You've got to like the video, be subscribed to the channel and share the video most importantly. Make sure you share it and you could be in with a chance to win this Doom Tank, seriously. The lucky competition winner will be drawn on the regular Thursday episode on the 7th of March. With some resin kits, you do get a little bit of warping. So you see these tracks, they're not 100% straight. And also this ram here, the support for it, is skewed. Now, that happens sometimes when the resin's drying, and there's a very easy way to fix that, which I'm about to show you now. In this section, the mech's garage, I'm going to be building the Doom Tank. Now, I would suggest the first thing to do would be to lay out all of your parts for the Doom Tank, and section them up so you've got your, your main parts, your, your RAM parts, your wheels and tracks parts, and then the odd gubbins bits that are going to go on the end, which are just tanks and exhausts and stuff like that. So 
So then what you want to do is you want to go through them all and just trim off the bits of flashing like you've got here in between, a little bit of flash between, and on the back of this ram here, just see on this nut, let me just bring it up, see there, and just in there. So you want to go around and clean all your, your flashing off, but just before you do that, just have a little dry fit to see if everything's okay. So you can take your two parts of your hull, and it's got an indicating arrow in there so you know which way forward is. Put that together like that. So that fits nicely as it is. No trimming required. Nice snug fit. You could, if you want to be really sneaky, put some magnets and then you've got a secret stash box there. Isn't that cool? Um, the next thing, these are the sides right there. So let's see if that goes on without any hassle. Oh, yeah. Probably even stay there. Looks like it goes on this side. Lovely, lovely. So there you go, that's partly dry fitted. The gun sits in the front like that. Oh, yeah, no problem, so that's good. Lovely, lovely. So, round pegs in there. Wheels. Okay, so on the backs of the wheels, you see these, this triangle piece here. That's going to have to come off. These uh, round bits, I'm presuming we're going to keep. Let's take a look at the bottom. Yes, so we're going to want to keep those because they're going to meet up with those. Lovely, lovely, see? So just have a little look at it all first, just to understand where you're at. And like I've said before, on the Green One website, they've got some very useful downloadable instruction manuals. So before doing any of this, as I've done, just have a quick look at that. Just to familiarise yourself with what the process is going to be. Just doing the dry fit stage, you're just seeing that these track bits do meet up. Um, and what I have found is that although there are two sections, say, that are very similar, it's best to try them on both, and the long piece on both, and the, and the bent piece on both, just to see which uh, main unit they work best with, because some seem to sometimes they just seem to fit better on one than they do the other and why cause yourself more hard work in in trying to bridge gaps and stuff like that it's much easier to find one where it fits with best but as i say i'm going to hot water bend these so they, they land on just perfect before we actually attach the tracks we're going to just trim them up so you need some cutters and a knife and what we're going to do with this we're just going to uh, trim any extra bits. So although these pins should stick out here, that bit there, that's that's extra. So we'll just trim that off. Just tidying up with a knife any bits that need not be there. Just a little bit of tidying trim. We can do a little bit of green stuff filling here and there because nothing there. To, well, say like very small little bubble blow out there. See. So if you're going caking these tracks in rust and dirt effects and stuff like that, that's not even going to matter. But for the sake of it, I'm going to fill that in with green stuff because there's a few other little tiny little blowouts here and there. So do that all at the same time. It's not going to hurt. But yeah, so go round with a knife and trim up. This is our next stage. Two other things you might want to get hold of is to cut the clamps and clips and stuff like that for when you're gluing, just to hold it, hold the model together. I do that with a lot of my resin kits that I do. Another thing that I quite often do is I will uh, pin the model. So I will collect bits of old plastic rod. This is just a, I can't remember, a stirring stick or something like that. I don't know, from a bar or something like that. This is an actual piece of plastic rod. You could use those. They're, they're fairly more expensive though, and they've got other, other practical uses. So I prefer to use odd bits and bobs and paper clips and stuff like that for a bit of pinning. And for the same purpose also, I've got my uh, I've got my procs on, so I can um, get drilling some get drilling some holes. Um, so you want a few drill bits too if you want to do any pinning. I just you don't need to pin. You can glue. I just I prefer it because I know then. The model is going to hold together much better if it, if it takes a little bit of a knock or a small drop you know it should hold together that little bit better um, also of course you're going to need super glue so there's lots of different super glues out there you can get um, 
I like to have a variety of super glues for different purposes and stuff like that. I mean, I've got more on the shelf as well. But for this, I'm mostly going to use this, to be honest. This is, this is my favorite super glue to be using. But, uh, I mean, this one's handy. It's got a little brush. I haven't even opened that one. Um, yeah, and this one's more of a gel, you know. It, it just, yeah, have a few on hand. It's, it's useful, but I really do like this. This brand is very good. It does set very quick. I don't have any accelerator. Now, I would usually also use accelerator, but I, um, I don't have any, so, you know, whatever. When it comes to sanding these sections on the back of of these, now, there are lots of ways that you can sand and file, um, but to be honest, when you're coming to the backs or something like this, there's no point in using, like, your nice fancy stuff. You want that for use on fascias, things that that matter that you can see on the backs of things like this oh, to be honest with you, I, I'm using old nail files they're flexible they're, they're cheap as chips you can buy loads of them from the pound shop for or the euro shop for absolutely you know just one one pound or 150 something like that you get loads of them so that's that's what I tend to use for stuff that doesn't matter so much that you're not going to see like there's lots of fancy little sponges and uh, sanding blocks and stuff that you can buy but why why use them on your on on things that you're not gonna see you know like the you know it's nice to have good things but it's also good to know when to use cheap stuff that up to the body see how that looks other way that's the one <laughs> nice nice I think down at this edge being such a large surface area super glue is great but I think I might use two part epoxy resin and then that will really set on there nice and then once that has set I'm going to fill this line with some green stuff. Just tuck some down in there to make it look like a weld. But lovely. Yeah! Going to put the tracks into the hot water. Just let them float around for a little while and get some, some warmth into them.
So this is as far as I'm going to take the kill tank at the moment. Um, I have uh, magnetized the, the ram on the front there, so the magnets are in there. Um, I haven't yet magnetized the weapon, I've got to do that yet. Um, I'm leaving the sides with the pegs because they, they hold perfectly well. I don't need to magnetize them to be honest, there's no need. Um, so I'll leave them as they are. I've left the engine off for the time being um, because all of those gubbins and bits, as beautiful as they are, I want, as, as I you always do with my models, I always want them to be a little bit unique at least. So I'm probably going to go changing up the engine a little bit maybe, just change up the exhaust or something like that. And I want to do some converting on this bad boy yet. So that's what I'm going to do in part two. So look for that in a future episode, guys. Before we come to the end of the show, I'd like to introduce one of the other regular segments that I'm going to be running. I've done it a few times in the past, but now it's regular, and that is the Community Showcase. And the Community Showcase is a place where I can show some love back to all of those people that are sharing their amazing alt models out there, because I spend a lot of my own time browsing the internet for inspiration and just looking at other people's cool work. And to be honest, they're kind of the reason that I spent so much time online looking at all stuff that I ended up doing more stuff and ended up doing my own channel. So it's those people that inspired me and other people in the community that are new even, it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that the community is always active and producing. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the work of Chris Bull. Chris has been helping me out behind the scenes for a little while, giving some advice. He's a very knowledgeable chap. You might know of him already. He's, he's very active in a lot of the uh, Orc Facebook groups and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's take a look at Chris Ball's Doom Tank. As you can see, Chris opted not to magnetize the main weapon and instead to use a peg system. He also decided that the ram at the front should slot in. Um, so he drilled out, as you can see, he drilled out the, uh, the body, the hull, uh, so that the ram would slide into the hull and be held in like that. Um, that's one way you can do it, and or you could glue it in, but I, I personally I'm going to magnetise, that's the way I'm going to go about mine. As you can see, Chris has painted his Doom Tank uh, in the colours of the second place show off the Bad Moons. Obviously coming second place to Freebooters, because the best show offs end up as Freebooters. Drawing a battle line there, aren't I? But no! Bad Moons, great, loving the look of it. I always do like the way that the, the yellow armor of Bad Moons matches well with the, the metallics and stuff. It always looks really snazzed and it? it does look good. Looks great, I really do like it, Chris. Good job, mate, great paint job. Um, and it's nice to see the model complete and painted. You know, I can't wait to get mine painted now as well. Next up, we have this fantastic scratch build from Artem. His inspiration to build this kill tank came from some artwork from the Battletech universe of their tanks. Artem chose to paint the tank yellow because he doesn't have that very many yellow tanks in his army. It's not that he particularly always goes with bad moons, but he thought it would look nice with the rust effect that he wanted to try out. He used some MIG pigments mixed with vodka, but he's a little bit disappointed at how they turned out. Although I think they look fairly decent. For rivets, Artem has used nail art studs. So there's a little useful tip for you guys if you're looking for a cheap way to get hold of some decent little rivets. I think you'll agree, for a scratch build, this is an awesome kill tank. And I'm really glad that Artem allowed me to share it with you guys. Talking of sharing, don't forget to share this video if you want to be in with a chance to win yourself a Doom Tank. So all you have to do, like I say, is like this video, leave a comment, in the comment section to tell me which variant you'd like, share the video most importantly, and be subscribed to the channel. And you could actually be in with a chance to win this Doom Tank. So, until next time guys, Nuff said! You have oh, and the big cannon of, of the, the kill burst stuff or blast stuff whichever it was <laughs> whatever <laughs>